What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Dan here. I'd like to welcome you guys back to LA Noir 2017 version. Moving on to the next murder case now. Let's do it. Sarge, why are the guys giving it to the doggies? They're riding in trucks, numbsco, while you're marching. They look pretty badly beat up. Yeah, they do it then. Scuttlebutt says it's pretty hard going down south. Yeah, we'll find out soon enough. Recon always leads. How can we fail, Skip, with the shadow leading the show? What the fuck is a shadow? Lieutenant Phelps, the shadow of death. What the fuck are you talking about? He's a quiet fucker, Sarge. You never hear the bastard coming. You're sitting there, field stripping a cigarette, and suddenly he's there looking down on you. Why do you think we keep saluting that Jap loving son of a bitch? He's bad juju. That's enough out of you three. Bad juju? Where were you dragged up? A swamp? Good morning, gentlemen, and what a grand morning it is, too. We have just cause for celebration. Galloway and Phelps are sending another fiend to San Quentin. A nice showy trial, and he'll be strapped down with gas seeping into his tiny reptile brain. Now, to fresh business. Galloway and Phelps, the task is at hand. The address is on the hill, north downtown of Fremont Avenue. All right, guys, let's get there. Skipper, is the new letter genuine? Now, boys, we all know how many imbeciles have confessed in the short case. Ray Pinker will let us know in good time. All right, guys, let's head on over to the crime sizzle. Keep this junk heap going. Greetings from sunny California. When's it going to stop? Come on, man, get where is he? <laughs> Glad you could join us. Fine morning indeed. We keep locking them up, but the bodies keep piling up. Ah, California's love a fad, Phelps. As long as the bricks hold up at San Quentin, there'll always be killers in this town to send. First the letter, and now another body. Come on, you can't keep on telling me there's not a killer still out there. You know, Phelps, all these arrests on your racket are giving you a reputation. You don't want them turning into unsolved. Getting a vicious killer off the streets is more important than my reputation. Really? And besides, landing a big fat marlin is more impressive than an ocean full of minnows. The minnows make it the man, but you can't always hit home runs. Sometimes you just gotta make the first place. Interesting way of thinking about it. Detectives? Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Scene secure. The rest of the patrolmen are going door to door, canvassing for witnesses. Thanks. Keep me informed. Will do, detective. This looks awfully familiar. I think that's the impression the boys from the examiner took with them as well. There's nothing original under the sun. Why should murder be any different? What do we have so far? Not much trace evidence to speak of. Storm blew in around 10 last night, and the rain washed most of it away. And the body? Looks like she was tipped out of an automobile from the tire tracks and superficial injuries. Strangled with a length of rope. And for my money, it's triple braid again. Time of death. From a temperature, maybe 2 a.m., but it was cold last night. Usual head injuries. Blunt force trauma. Knock him over the head, then strangle and mutilate. No message with this one. At least she was left clothed. I doubt very much he was concerned with her dignity. The green silk dress is very distinctive. Any sign of her other shoe? No. And no handbag or other personal effects. All right, so before we go near the body, let's uh, grab these things. The others. Our driver and our killer are most likely one and the same. It's crazy how far forensics has come. Come on, man. These are the footprints, yeah? 
Most likely size eight. Actually, they are no size drag eight. Marks. Killer was moving around, surveying the scene. Okay, now let's check out the body. See what's, what we can find. Another nasty neck mark. There appears to be a dry cleaning label. Superior Laundry Services, F1363. Can use that to get a uh, ID. I don't really think there's anything else with this. She doesn't have a wedding ring or anything removed. Although I'm pretty sure she... Wait a minute. Maybe she wasn't wearing it. Oh, I remember this one. Oh my gosh. Totally remember this one. The dry cleaning thing put it off. Tipped it off. This is an interesting mission, ladies and gentlemen. I'll show you why in a moment, Tito. Okay, hold on. Let me use the game well. Or not. Detectives, I've been working the houses across the street and up the block. This lady thinks she has something for us. Detective Phelps, LAPD. I'm Mrs. Barton, Catherine Barton. I live just across the way. All right, let's see. Did you see anyone around here last night? Not last night, but yesterday, early evening, I saw that awful hobo. See, here's what's funny about this one. She to, went out of her way to come to the crime scene to give you useful information. Why on earth would you You're lying about there's no hobos in this city. You know, you, there's only one answer. Do you have a description? Tall, gaunt, horribly disfigured. I think he may have had an accident in the war. He's a very scary, angry man. Any idea where we might find him? One of the hobo camps around here. He's some kind of hobo leader. They all follow him around. Thank you, ma'am. You've been a big help. Of course. Anything I can do to help. I'd hate to think that something so ghastly could happen right here and nothing be done about it. Of course. Mucho apreciado, madam. Anyway, uh, let's go use the game well because we got to get an address. Uh, I would assume for the laundromat and possibly the hobo camp as well. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. I need an address on Superior Laundry Services. Just a moment. Superior Laundry Services. 1260 West 1st Street. Can you track down reports of hobo camps in the vicinity of Signal Hill? Just a moment, Detective. There's a large camp under the bridge on Grand between Temple and Sunset. Thank you. Okay, well, let's head to the squad car. We're going to go to the laundry services first. I think we're supposed to wait on the hobo camp for a little while. Move your ass over. Can you drive to this one? Fine. Where are we headed? Laundromat, let's get an address. No message. Excuse me? There was no message. Where? On the Vic. The last bodies had something written on them. This one didn't. I'm failing to follow you. Can't be the same guy as what I'm saying, right? Before you start trying to link this to Maldonado and all the others. There are more factors to consider than the messages, Rusty. This doesn't fit your pattern, Cole. End of conversation. Understand? All right. Yeah, I remember this one because it's one of... The, this case is one of the most unique. Not in the fact of the style of the killing or whatever... Um, but what you have to do in it. I remember this one now like it was yesterday. Again, I don't want to give too much away. I'll show you guys as we go along. Hello. At least the rain stopped. You can change back into those white bucks now. Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. We're investigating a case and one of your laundry labels came up. F1363. If you give me a minute, I'll go find a register and you can take a look. You take a look for yourself. I've got clothes that need pressing. I know that dude. 
He wrote the number down on that dress. Is it there? I know his voice, anyway. Uh, okay, we gotta look for one. What was it? One three six three. There it is. Terrelson. Mrs. T. Terrelson, forty-three Green soap dress. Emerald Street, Westlake. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. That's literally all we need to do from here. Now we're gonna head to the Terrelson residence. You're behind the wheel. And where exactly are we going? And we're going to have a word with uh, the family. Unfortunately, got to break the news to him. I've got a feeling we're about to meet another wife killer. You've always got that feeling, Rusty. Yeah, and it's usually correct. Please, please, for once, can you not let your assumptions color your detective work? Just you wait. Nordic type, show a particular disposition for this stuff. All right, here it is. Looks like a bit of a mud hole right now because of the rain. Oh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> All his children are there. Hello? Yes? Detectives Phelps and Galloway. Is your wife home, sir? My wife went out last night and she hasn't come home. Can you describe your wife and what she was wearing? We were out at a friend's place, Bobby Ross's, for a party. She was kind of dolled up. She had her green silk dress, open-toed white shoes. Those are her favorite shoes. Can we come in, Mr. Tarleton? I'm afraid we have some rather bad news. See, if someone said that... Do you have someone who can look after your children, Mr. Tarleton? I've been trying to arrange a sitter. Look, tell me what's happened. I'm afraid your wife was murdered last night. Her body was found this morning. We're very sorry for your loss. I know this is a difficult time, Mr. Terrelson, but we are going to need you to answer some questions. First, we're going to take a look around. What for? You don't think it's that... It's procedure. You see to your girls. Stay here till Daddy's finished talking to these men. Where's Mommy? Everything's gonna be all right, sweetheart. We would like Mommy to come home now, Daddy. What's the problem, Terrelson? Let him search. You got nothing to hide. Okay. Oh. You wanna hear something funny, Terrelson? Some bums think filling out a missing persons report actually rules them out. You check if she was a regular. All right, there's Baron's Bar. I think that'll be next up on the agenda where we got Stagu. If you'd excuse me, ladies. Ah. Lars was out in the rain last night. Okay. Muddy boots. My bet. Size eight. We could see if Pinker can match the impression of the crime scene. Everyone is size eights. Like, see, does that everything has the same? That doesn't that bother anyone else? Her purse. So she went out without her handbag. I'll grab it. Lipstick. At least she was spared that particular indignity. All right, well, that's that. And there's her ID in there as well. She'd have to be in quite a state to leave this behind. It's pretty crazy how, like, your ID had your thumbprint or your fingerprint on it as well. That's pretty interesting. I mean, if only people had that nowadays, I mean, it would be... Well, we have to go outside anyway, so we're going outside. Um, I'm pretty sure there was something in his backyard. Doggo! The boat! Yes! The rope here. It's very circumstantial, isn't it? it? Looks like a match with the ligature marks. And will you look at that? We've got everything we need. So let's go around to the front door. And let's have a word with, with the man himself. For the record, Mr. Terrelson, what is your wife's name? Teresa. Okay. Do you have any idea why anyone would want to hurt your wife? No. 
Everyone loved Teresa. She was so full of life. It can't be anyone who knew her. Mm, but dude... What about the rope? I think you're lying, Lars. I think you were mad at your wife for embarrassing you in front of your friends. I think you came back here and strangled her and then dumped her body on the hill. You think I strangled my wife? How do you expect to prove that? The rope I found. Your wife was strangled with triple braid rope. The bowline from your boat is a perfect match. Look, I know this looks bad. I'm going to have to come to terms with the fact that I let her go. You said you went to a party at Bobby Ross's place? That's right. Bobby had a bunch of people over. We were having a good time. She said she was bored and decided to leave. He's like, yeah, he's a little too shifty for my taste. You let your drunk wife leave the party and go off on her own? Look, I was angry. I was having a good time. She has to go and ruin it. We always have to do what she wants to do. Last night she wanted to go dancing. Any idea where? Where she always goes. A bar down on North Beaudry Avenue. Baron's Bar. She goes there, drinks too much, gets maudlin and calls me. I go and bring her home. You're a good husband for doing that, man. Mr. Terrelson, was Teresa happy at home? Yeah, I think she was. Dude, that is so... You're bad at this. You're really bad at this. Spill it, Terrelson. We like the look of you for this, so you better give us something. We're at the party. She has a few and says she wants to go out dancing. We only have the sitter until nine. I get mad. I tell her to go ahead, but I'm staying. She storms out. Look, I'm doing well at cards. I hardly ever do well. I married her because she was so much fun, but now she drives me fucking crazy. What time did she leave the party? About 8.30, maybe a little earlier. That's so early to be leaving a party, dude. When was the last time you saw your wife? Around 8.30. The card game at Bobby's was wrapping up. I played out my hand and drove home here. I paid the sitter and went to bed. Except you didn't, dude. He, what about his wet clothes? You're lying, Lars. You didn't come straight home, did you? And how do you figure that? You went out in the rain, dude. If you just come straight home, you'd got in your car. It might be a little bit wet, but not as soaking, soppy, muddy like they were. Which places you at the scene. I guess I could do either or. Let's do the jacket. You were out in the rain. You got soaked, Lars. We found your wet weather gear. Okay, I stayed a little later than I said. This cute little brunette was hitting on me. <sighs> Teresa noticed. I was half cut. I walked her home from Bobby's, but nothing happened. I walked back and got the car this morning. Thanks for answering our questions, Mr. Terrelson. You'll need to go downtown to identify your wife's body. I should have taken her dancing. In my experience, Mac, if you give in to broads, you'll be giving in to them your entire life. Yeah, but... We could break the husband's story right now. Call in, get some uniforms dispatched to check out his alibi. He's got a phone here. We're going to use it. But honestly, though, if he did, she would be Operate alive. For it's not his fault, but as far as we know. Putting you through now. Phelps badge 1247. How could I help, detective? Can you run an address for a Bobby Ross? Then send some uniforms over. Would you like him picked up? No. Suspect says he was with Ross last night. We need to confirm the alibi. I'll get a prowl car dispatched. Thanks for your help. All right, well, that's that. Now let's go on over to the bar. Have a few drinks. You know I mean, the way. She ain't getting drive. any better. No, I'm just kidding. Fine. Where are we headed? Let's go. All right, let's see what we could find out. Gents, drink? Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. I'm Benny Clough. This is about Teresa Terrelson? Yes, it is. I heard about it on the radio. They're saying it was that Black Dahlia freak again? God damn it. Yeah, I rang that husband of hers. 
the babysitter said he was out. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. What time did Teresa leave? Uh, around uh, 10.30, I think. That's pretty early too, man. On foot, in a car, by bus, how was it? She called for a cab. Did you get the number? Sure I did. I like Teresa. The only time she has a drink is when things aren't going so good at home. I was worried about her. Where's that goddamn waitress? You're a good man, dude. Put out an APB on the cab. 3591. Should be traceable. All right, that, this is where things... Well, I'll show you in a second, after we're done, after all is settled. Who was she with? We've had reports about a tall, gaunt-looking hobo. He wasn't here last night? I get plenty of bums in here, but nothing to fit that description. Well, you, well I don't know why you're looking at me like that, dude. You, you know more. The likelihood is that whoever she left here with killed her. Give it up, Benny. All right, two creeps were all over her, promising to... Take her dancing. You get a good look at these guys? Sure. I got a good look. One of them was a sailor in uniform. His cap said, uh, USS Indiana. And the other man? The other guy is Richard Bates. He's sitting in the back right now. Red polo shirt. Any idea where she was headed? Uh, nope. I didn't get that. I guess he wouldn't know that, would he? Judging from the straight face he's given me. The husband said she wanted to go dancing. And she always wants to dance when she's been drinking. She was trying to talk some guys into taking her to one of the dance halls. Thank you for your help, Mr. Clough. We'll take it from here. Hey, no problem. He had a lot of information. This is Bates. That's him. LAPD, don't make me chase you, shitbird. Can't let what the a moron. Get away. They always run and they always move. Go, Phelps. Get after well, it. You're in the way. Jeez. Get on. Got to ride. Get in and drive. Sorry, Holmes. I need your car. Come on, Rusty. Let's rock. I thought you were going to leave me there. Who knows what this guy will pull when he's cornered. We could have a killer on our hands. Careful. I don't want to hit anything. Watch out, people. I got no alarm either. No, this is a civilian's vehicle. I don't think the killer would be kicking back in the bar where he met the victim. Listen, a creature of habit no. is a killer. For some reason, they're sticklers for routine. Phelps, you gotta get me closer. Don't shoot while you. Whoa! Jesus, don't shoot while we're going through a gas station. Are you stupid? Hit it. Clean this asshole off the road. Move! Move! I don't want to hit anybody. I got you, fam. I'm trying to shoot out his tires. Yeah, yeah, I'm Wish with you. I'm with you. Lie. There he goes! Let's end this farce. Go, 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 go! I've had enough. You better have, fam. Put your hands in the air! No, wave them like you just don't okay, care! <laughs> you're gonna answer some questions. I have a choice in this. You just ran from the police. You're lucky we don't, like, throw you in the slammer. But maybe we'll still do that. Look at this douche. <laughs> okay, anyway. Last night, you went drinking with a lady in the bar. Now she's dead. And your face is all messed up. I'm in the clear on that. She preferred a sailor. You could lay it off on him. Are we finished? Not when you give me a look like that, dude. Do you want my partner to sap you? Tell us what we want to know. She was okay. Drunk. Pissed off at her old man, wanting to go dancing. I thought I'd ply her with a few drinks and get my end away. Looks like your salty had the same idea. People are... These guys are... I know this actor. I'm familiar with him. So what happened when you left the bar? Sailor Boy laid one on me. A cheap shot. After that, I don't know. You know what happened. Look at his face. No one goes... I don't know what happened. Like, no one does that. You've done time, haven't you, Richard? Is that why you ran? I'm on parole. On what offense? Sexual assault. Look, I was lying there on the sidewalk. He flags a cab and jumps in with the broad. We're taking you in, Bates. How come? Just for a chat. Nice private chat. 
I'll explain my theory of once a degenerate, always a degenerate. Take him to Central. He's a material witness in a murder case. Find him a cozy cell. Richard here knows the drill. Okay, so... Now, hold on, I gotta use the phone. Oh, look. Perfect. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Phelps, batch 1247. How can I help, detective? I need an APB out on a yellow cab, number 3591. Ask dispatch to relay all sightings to car 11K. No problem. I'll get on the radio. Were there any incident reports filed in the vicinity of Barron's Bar on North Beaudry Avenue? We're tracking a sailor who was involved in a fight outside the bar. I can check the reports, Detective. I have a message for you from Captain Donnelly. Message reads, James Jessup, U.S. Navy Able Seaman, has information relevant to your case. Jessup is currently being detained at Central Station. Could be our man. Thanks. Okay, now before we go into this is what I'm talking about. Before we go to interrogate Jessup, we need to hop in the car myself, and I have to drive for a bit. We gotta wait till we get updates on the eight. We gotta find the ca the cab first. That's the thing, guys. We have to manually find it. Car 11K, we have a response on your eight speed regarding yellow cab number 351. The vehicle has been identified at a gas station. Now heading west on 7th Street. All right, let's go. Garage on 7th Street. Let's hit it, Phelps. The cab driver might tie this whole thing together. I hope you're right. Let's go. Now, this is where you gotta be careful because you're doing a lot of the you driving see a taxi yourself. Anywhere? Hopefully, we'll be nearby. Not too far away. I'll put this the, the, the blues and twos on. Just so that'll give us a bit more space. Excuse me, fellas. It's pretty far away. Oh, where's that cab? It's moved. We're, we're actually even closer. 11K, yellow cab number 3591. Sighted at the there it is. That's it. Look at that face. LAPD, we're investigating a murder. What's that got to do with me? The fare you picked up from Baron's bar last night. What was the woman wearing? It was a green dress. Oh, don't tell me something's happened to her. Tell me about her. She was with this sailor, and he was all over her. She wasn't having any of it. Said she just wanted to dance. But he had that look in his eye. Where did you drop them off? It's at the Crystal Ballroom. What time? Uh, after midnight. 12.30? Something like that. Thanks. You've been a big help. Well, that's gonna ruin my day. Well, we appreciate your help, man, really. That was actually, I remember chasing all over the place for him. That worked wonderfully. So we're gonna get out. And now, you can drive. You can drive. We're gonna go to the police and station. where exactly are we going? We're gonna go interview the sailor now. Mr. Jessup. Not Mr. Dressup, Mr. Jessup. Dude, don't do this to me. Can you drive to this one? I, I found it. Even in the re-release, this game still has its glitches. Okay, so, um... He's in interview two. Thank you. Thanks. What do you make of him? Sailor on furlough, who looks like he's in trouble and knows it. Appreciate it, my man. All right, guys, so let's go to interview two. Now, there's one thing, since I have an interview with these guys, there's a trophy that if you use your intuition four times and correctly uh, get the questions correct, you'll get a trophy. So I'm going to use my intuition. Detectives Phelps and Galloway, we know why you're here, Jessup. So it would be best if you answered our questions truthfully. I don't want any trouble. That's why I'm here. I heard on the radio about this lady getting killed. I got leave from my CO to come down straight away. So why did you kill her? I didn't kill anyone. Look, you need to believe me. Let's start at the beginning. All right, first question. You went to Baron's bar. 
What time did you arrive? I got a 24-hour pass. I got there around 7. That's where you met Teresa Terrelson? Sure. We had a couple of drinks. So let's use our intuition. Remove an answer, ask the community. Chose the correct answer. See, I, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I know these. So you tried to make a woman who was incredibly drunk? Look, I'm not proud of myself, but I never hurt her. You took her dancing? That's right. Caught a cab to the crystal ballroom. See, that's the thing. Like, when you really think about it, and if you've already played this game, like, once through... Actually, I've played this game... This will be my third time through. Um, it's pretty easy to figure out what they're... Fi Some of them are a little trickier, but... You know what I mean? Like, he's, like, guilty. He's, he always looks guilty all the time, but we don't have any evidence against him yet. So it's going to be, like, doubt every time he, like, constantly looks, like, sketchy. So... You had a fist fight with Richard Bates over Mrs. Terrelson. You met the guy? He's a creep. You should take a look at him for this. See, like, he's shifty again. So really, the we got to use the bad cop. But we'll use an intuition point. See, that makes it so easy. If it removes the cues and he's shifty, you know it's bad cop. He's pointing the finger directly at you, Jessup. I only had one night before I was back in the tub. He had all the time in the world to look for some action. I belted him. I'd do it again. She was better off with me. Sure. You're a shining example of chivalry, Jessup. Where did you go after the Crystal Ballroom? Uh, I think the wind had gone out of her sails by then. She caught a cab and I caught a bus back to the base. Again, he's looking shifty as hell. So we'll just keep using the intuition. Just to remove an answer. We spoke to the cab driver. Tell us what really happened at the Crystal Ballroom. I'd had enough. She was all upset about her husband bawling about her kids. She, she looked old. Left around closing, maybe 1.30. Got on a bus and she fell asleep on my shoulder. Which bus? An All-American, 249. I went past her place. She jumped off and I stayed on it downtown. After that, I caught another bus to San Pedro. The Indiana's down there. She's being scrapped. And that was the last you saw of Teresa? Yeah, that's right. We didn't say much. I think she was kind of embarrassed. All right, last one. The cab driver said that you were getting pretty familiar with Teresa. That's not how I'd put it. Look at that smirk. So the last thing you wanted was her. There it is. Heart That's get. what I was waiting on. Did that make you mad, sailor? Yeah, it did. She knew what a guy's looking for. All broads do. Dancing comes second. And what happened at the Crystal Ballroom? Nothing. Not even a little hand relief. She had another couple of drinks. There was no fun left in her. Just poured her guts out to some bartender. We're holding you till we can clear this with the driver. Yeah, my CO said as much. Can you put the guy in two in a cell and inform the commander? Sure, detective. All right, now we gotta go... I got a message for you. Sighting of your disfigured hobo on Grand between Temple and Sunset. And it looks like the bow has a record, too. He's wanted in connection with two female assault. Thanks. What now? Drive all the way to San Pedro and check his locker? Let's see if the bus story checks out. There's a depot at 1660 Beverly Boulevard. All right, we're heading to the bus depot now. We'll do that first before going to the hobo camp. You know the way. You can drive. Where are we heading? If I'm not mistaken, we got to track that bus as well, just like we did the car, the cab. Hurry up, Rusty. Get in here. We got places to go. Three suspects in the can and one on the hoof. And still no hard evidence on any of them. Love it, Kate. Go ahead. Patrolman reporting that Bobby Ross's car game is breaking up at midnight. Eleven K. Roger that. Only have time to get downtown, Cole. It's possible. Have them bring him in. KGPL. We have Lars Carrollson picked up.
All right, here's the bus depot. We gotta find the bus that was out. I don't think it's, I think, like I said, man, I think we gotta track it again. And thank you, ma'am. You have a safe trip now. Where are you boys headed today? LAPD. We're after the driver of All American 249. Would have been around midnight onwards last night. Uh, just a minute. Frank Zeffirelli. He's your man. Where can we find him? Frank is out on the 7 4. Can you tell us the route? Hang on. Uh, I'm. Should have it mapped out here somewhere. All right, let's take a look at where it goes. It's a pretty straightforward route, isn't it? Okay. Oh, never mind. We'll need to run the loop. All right, so, yeah, it's a giant loop. I think it does kind of mark you. Uh, we're not going to drive the whole thing, are we? Won't take long. We have a siren. Okay, so where's where's my whip? Can I drive a bus? I don't think I can drive a bus, bus but we can try. No, we can't drive a bus. <laughs> and the, the upside, though, is it, it is quite obvious. So my question is, which... Wait, can I see it again? Let me look at the... The bus route All map. American 7-4, let's go get it. Let's see, which way does it go? Oh, damn it. I can't remember which way it went. So, like, hold on. If I go to the map, um, the bus, I think, goes this way. You know what I mean? Like, this way. So, oh, no. Yeah, so let's, let's follow it this way to the left. So, we'll turn around. And we'll go... That way, we'll run into it straight on. You know what I mean? The front end will be coming towards us. Uh, this could be a long trip, Cole. Or I don't think so. Short one. And here's me without my hip flask and only a pain in the ass for company. Way to kick off the drive in high spirits, Rusty. Comments like that put me in just the right mood for some legwork. Touchy. You know what your problem is? You don't like hard work. This kind of rigorous search is what police work is all about. Discipline. Say it, Phelps. You're just as bored as I am. Hey, man, it could be worse. <laughs> Ah, I hate intersections when I don't have a green. Excuse me, fellers. Just keep an eye out for a bus. They're pretty obvious to spot anyway, so. I hope we don't have to run the whole thing. That would be kind of crappy. Coming through. Move. Move your rectum. I'm trying to get through. Thank you. At least they actually do move. You gotta look at it that way. Okay, coming up to a left turn. Thank you. Excuse me. Where's this damn bus? I'm still no sign of him. Did you doze off, Rusty? I think you slept through my solving the case. Yeah, yeah. Very funny. You just give me a nudge if you see him, right? How about you nudge me? I think that's a job for your wife. Oh, You're the one draw. Oh, Jesus! See that twitchy crap that guy pulled? That's a tram. Not a bus. Good lord, where in the blue balls is this bus? He's, of course, gonna be on the complete opposite side. There it is! That's it! Stop. That's the bus we're looking for. Ease in behind her and get her to the side of the road. Hello. There's some See kind him? of problem, buddy? Sorry, picture me. LAPD. We're out. investigating a murder. You had a sailor and a woman in a green dress on your bus late last night? That's correct. And the woman got off first, around 2 a.m.? Yeah, that's right. And the sailor stayed on all the way to downtown. Can you tell us where you let the woman off? On California Street. To tell you the truth, she looked a little lost, like she got off on the wrong stop or something. I didn't like dropping her off near that hobo camp. You've been a big help, Mr. Zeffirelli. 
That is actually really big help. Sorry, I'll move my car. So Staler boy escaped by the seat of his bell-bottom trousers. He left the broad alive. Left her by the hobo camp. That's Which a... means he's as good as killed her. We can't eliminate any of them. But the disfigured man should be our starting point. I'm gonna call for some backup. You both hate cops. I think we ought to investigate the hobo lead. Well, if you think we ought to, then I guess we ought. All right, I think this will be our last stop for this case. LAPD, we'd like a word with you. Save it for someone who's interested. They're fascists. Come to move us on and steal what little we have left. Six rounds won't get us far. We need you to stay copacetic. We need to hold out the cavalry. How do we do that? Like this. Pet wreck. If you want your right, I got this man. Yes. Woo! Come on, boy. Duck. Oh, he got me there. Oh, my hat came off. Oh, but he got knocked out. What's your name? Comrade Stalin. Very funny. We'll find out from your personal effects. Stuart Ackerman. You're under suspicion for murder, Ackerman. We're taking you downtown. You. You can't do anything more to me than what the Japanese have already done. I was in that war too, fam. Don't give me that. All right, here we go. Look, we got ourselves a newspaper. Over here, Phelps. Toss it. See what you find. Still working, Jack. I'm off to the Lighthouse Club in Santa Monica. Hello, Jack. Mr. Vincent, this is Courtney Sheldon. He's a buddy of mine from the war. Well, I'm sure you two will want to polish some old war stories. Good evening, Jack. Mr. Sheldon. Good night, sir. Take a seat, Courtney. We need your help, Jack. I told you I would have nothing to do with that. I'm fine too, Jack. Medical school's going well. I got a part-time job. Do dope peddlers need part-time jobs? We made a mistake and we're in trouble, Jack. A local gangster, Mickey Cohen, is putting on the squeeze. So hand it over, walk away. What's stopping you? We had a deal with them, that they would dole it out slowly. They said they would supply abortion clinics and doctors. But they've been moving it on to addicts, and they can't cope with the purity. So your problem is with gangsters being dishonest. My problem is that people are dying, and that if this gets back to us, we'll all end up in jail. So how am I supposed to help, Courtney? This isn't the war. I can't just wave a magic wand and clean up your mess. We want you to negotiate, Jack. The only thing these guys understand is force, Sheldon. They got to the top back east by proving to be more vicious than the English, the Irish, and the Dutch. They make their own laws. That's the nature of a secret society. God's sake, Courtney, you want to be a doctor. How can you fight with that? We are better trained, Jack. I didn't make it through the war to come back to this kind of shit, Sheldon. Trust me, there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. And things get revealed as we move on, especially when we get to the Vice case. That's a big one there. Okay, so let's look around at some of his personal effects. Hmm. I don't think this is any use to us. Yeah, but it's still a picture of him in the war. It matches her dress, too.
Come on. Ackerman doesn't look like much of a dancer. And of course, the rope. Looks familiar. Safe bet it'll match the mark under Teresa Terrelson's chin. Well, we got all the information we need. And honestly, if you look carefully, the dude who, like, in the intro cutscene for this one, looks exactly like Ackerman. Like, you could tell, just like, if you don't, like, if you don't, if you want to check, rewind the, this video a bit and go back and take a little peek sausages. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. And where exactly are we going? Hurry up, buddy. We got to get there to interview this guy. And you should know that. You shouldn't have to ask me every time what's going on. He's drinking too much. The husband has an alibi, but no real motive other than neglect. Jessup's alibi checks out. Bates is a recidivist. He'll be pulling the same stick until we put him away for good. Ackerman has history, opportunity, hard evidence. But what motive? We have the evidence. We know she was here. All we need is a confession and we can charge the bum with murder. All right, let's put this prick to bed. Sounded wrong. We're going this way. He's in one, isn't he? Ackerman, you were in the Marines. How do you know? The Corps selected big guys for flamethrower duty. That's how you got the burns. Life expectancy was five minutes for a guy in flamethrower detail. What kind of a government puts weight like that on a man's shoulders? You'll get no argument from me. It was a heavy load. You feeling sorry for this smelly fuck? Sort of, not really. Why did you kill Mrs. Terrelson? I have no recollection of the people I have killed. Wow, you shifty bastard. We have the bloody rope. Are you denying that you strangled Mrs. Terrelson with a length of rope? I'm not denying anything. You have to have proof, lackey. All right, where is it? Right on the bottom. We found a matching piece of rope in your lean-to. I think we'll find the blood will match, too. I own no property. How could it belong to me? Doesn't mean you didn't take it and use it, ya bish. Look at this guy. Look at him. Look at that. He's guilty. A bus driver dropped Mrs. Terrelson near your camp around 2 a.m. Why did you take her up to the hill? Which hill? I have many places. I go where I please. And that face doesn't say anything at all? You are clearly insane, Ackerman. The state of California does not execute mental patients. I don't know the names of the women I've killed, but I've killed many of them. Their necks are so fragile. Where were you around 2 a.m. last night? At the camp. Yet, yet, do wait, wait, no, but we have her purse, don't we? You were up on the hill. You were seen during the day. We have a witness. We have evidence. Come clean with me, Ackerman, and I'll see what I can do for you. I despise your pity. You have nothing that links me to this woman. The purse. Not to mention the blood-stained rope. We have you cold, Ackerman. Her purse and the ballroom ticket were in your lean-to. Tell us why you did it. I kill because people need killing. It's what I was trained to do. Stuart Ackerman, I am charging you with the murder of Teresa Terrelson. This was one of the few that actually looks like he did it, you know? The other ones are like, you're not sure. Hey, at least he'll get a warm cot. <laughs> A man down on his luck, I can abide. But a filthy red who chooses to live outside the rules of society, I cannot stomach. Maybe poor threes of Tarleton will provide the catalyst we need. I've spoken to the chief and the mayor, and I think it's time we send some men in to remove the godless and send them on their way over the county line. A grand day that will be, gentlemen. 
and the grand results you have brought me. You two are fast becoming my finest crusaders. Thank you. Absolutely nailed it. An early visit to the hobo camp might have offered a lead, but good luck finding a coherent witness. So, why would it give me that? That wouldn't give me a coherent lead. Why would I go there? That's stupid. Anyway, we got the five stars. Valorous, that's all that matters. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this case, the white shoe slaying. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, do me a favor, hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, be sure to like and follow my pages on social media. Those will be down below in the description. And I'll point the end card of this video. If you're interested, you want to get yourself a shirt or hoodie, there's a link to my shop in the description as well. Thank you guys so much again. Take it easy. Have a fantastic day. I'll be seeing you soon for more content. But until then, let's hand things over to Knox Hill. Have a good one, guys. Who's the man with the plan? Hmm. If you feel trouble, wild and wild, no he's violent and hit you. Eight thousand. Wait a minute, hold that stylist style. Dan, goddamn Billy Jack, we still riding tires flat. I hear them sirens, see shots flying, so we driving by your back. If they ain't vibing, lie with that. Got me dressed up in all black. What up? Hood up, and I see them haters try to run with us, they gon' need inhalers. Gotta breathe them hard, just like the Vader players. Grab your respirators, night invaders get like sabered. Mass on for the shooters, move like trash to bed intruder. Got that Glock and got them woofers, just. Press play, I'll keep it moving. Who is Knox? Still, you damn fools. Keep it fresh like canned food. There ain't nothing we can't do, so tune into that damn kill. Yeah. It was never, ever a game.